Thank you very much, State Secretary, for your speech and uh, some enlightenment on where we're heading in uh, Norway. Our next speaker, as I mentioned, is from the FAO, and in this conference we've had a cooperation with the FAO for several years now. Uh, and Marcio has been here before, so he's not unknown to us, and we're not unknown to him. But uh, I looked up the CV, and that was quite impressive, because uh, I can see that uh, Mr. Castro de Souza has been working at the FAO uh, for some time now, but before that he's also been working in uh, Brazilian government, he's been working in the banking sector, uh, government agency, uh, and he also has a, a degree in both uh, uh, economics and uh, international law. So, quite impressive. Mr. de Souza, please. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, oh, I, I was speaking on my own voice. Sorry for. <laughs> Maybe I don't need a mic. <laughs> uh, so uh, the fish sector has faced a lot of changes in terms of production uh, in the last years. Uh, this is a very traditional graph that FAO presents in major uh, events, and it shows that uh, white capture fisheries has been, for the majority of time, uh, the major representative of fish production in the world. And of course, we see aquaculture production increasing a lot in the last years. I'm going to highlight two major points here. In 2012, aquaculture, for the first time, surpassed uh, white capture production for human consumption. That was a very strong data. And in addition to that, we are first seeing that in 2022, aquaculture production will surpass white capture fisheries for all, 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 all type of use, human consumption or not. So we see a relative stabilization of the white capture production and a huge increase of aquaculture. And why we have that? One of the reasons of having that is exactly the exhaustion of some resources uh, in terms of fishing. Of course, this is a global scenario, and then I'm going to talk a little bit later on the regional scenario. But what we have here is that throughout the years, we have the overfish, overfish stocks are increasing. You see this direct trend line here. And this blue area here is stocks that are all either underfished or either fished at a maximum sustainable level. So this is the good area that we can call that way. So this area has, this blue area has been re being reduced in the last years at a global level. So this is one of the reasons why you see that stabilization line in terms of uh, white capture. But one important issue that uh, I, I came from agriculture before joining fisheries. And it's, it's very hard, maybe not in Norway, because fish, fish production is very, is very strong here. But usually, when you see fish 
on the front line of a newspaper is usually because there is some bad thing about fisheries. Oh, there is a big problem. There is, we never saw usually in most of the world uh, front line about fisheries news if it's a good news. And one thing that most of the media explores a lot is that they put this area together with that area and they say that 90% of the stocks are in danger. And that's not true. This area is the target of management, uh, fisheries management. We cannot say that this area here is bad. So we, cannot, we can never add this area here to the orange area here. That's an important message that's written here. I, I mentioned that that was the global figure. But when you go for the regional level, the situation is quite different. Uh, the, uh, the, the green percentage here is sustainable fisheries, and the red percentage is overfished. So when you see at the global level, the situation is very good in some specific areas. We, we see that many countries, they have been able, using fisheries management, to control overfishing and to reduce overfishing indeed. So the situation at the global level is quite different from, uh, uh, sorry, the situation at the regional level is quite different from the global one. And when you talk about the producing countries, what are the top producing countries? Uh, of course, we have China, uh, both in capture and aquaculture as a major producer. Uh, in aquaculture, you have those uh, big producing countries, and I capture, you have those ones. It's a, it's, it's a very stable uh, source of countries. Sometimes they, there are some ma minor changes in terms of the ranking, but usually it's quite stable. Um, one issue that's important, and that, that these statistics, uh, these statistics, well, they were released last Friday, so it's very fresh data. So this is the 2018 production data for aquaculture. So we have seen a 2% growth from 2018 to 2017, uh, but aquatic animals have, have faced a 3.2 growth. Uh, in terms of major species, we have the surprising growth of crustaceans with 8.8 growth percent. And in terms of regions, the Americas have a very surprising increase rate. So those statistics are going to be available this week at the FAO website. Uh, I'm going to, to, to give you the address at the end. So those are very strong statistics about aquaculture continue to perform well, and I'm going to show you more in terms of the predictions that we have for the future. Um, we, when you talk about fisheries, we, we have to think that it's a quite important international commodity. Uh, Goose mentioned in the opening about uh, it's the, the most important international commodity. And why is that? One thing that uh, it's, it's really surprised is this graph. It shows us in terms of US dollars, in terms of exports in US dollars, that at a global level, fish is equivalent to the sum of beef, pork, and poultry. So indeed, we are the major exporters in value terms of animal protein. And what, how, how this trade occurs? This is a, this is a graph, this is a map uh, done by Rabobank, the Dutch bank, and it shows the seafood trade around the world. So the thicker the line, the bigger the trade, and the arrow shows uh, the flow of trade. And, and I, I think, of course, it's, uh, sometimes we take that for granted, but, uh, when you go, uh, fish has a very unique profile because you go, uh, consumers demand at a national level a specific species. This is not the case for pork. This is not the case for chicken. This is not the case for, for beef. So uh, even if a big producer, a big nation that's a big producer of fish, they have to import fish that they, don't, do not, they are not able to produce. 
So there is a natural incentive for international trade if you consider that it's impossible for every single country to cope with the national demand of all the species that the consumers are demanding. And what are the major exporters and importers? Uh, in terms of the import, you have the US, Japan, and the EU. Some, of course, China is also playing a big role now. Uh, and China, with all, we all know that the big role that they play in terms of processing fish, so they import, reprocess, and export. So China is also a big exporter of, of fish. They have Norway here, Chile with salmon, of course, Netherlands and Denmark, you have the processing and the Rotterdam effect. So it's basically re-exports. Uh, you have Canada, uh, you have uh, Thailand and India with shrimp, Vietnam with shrimp and Pegasus. So there is a lot of countries involved in fish trade and very diverse countries too. But international trade of fish and fish products is changing a lot lately. In the beginning, most of the countries, when they set regulations to import fish, they were very concerned about uh, the safety of the product. That was the beginning of the safety regulations in terms of sanitary requirements. Uh, maybe that's the, the, first, the first box here. After that, that was 30, 40 years ago. And after that, we had all this issue about sustainability, about all the labels, MSC and other labels that uh, fish products they have. And we are starting to have more demand in terms of the markets of only buying sustainable fish. That's a natural, it was a natural evolution. But nowadays, maybe we are starting to have like a, a third phase that consumers are willing to know more about the fish. Traceability is becoming quite important. Uh, it's important to know, uh, okay, I can, I can scan a QR code and see the picture of the fisherman that caught that by fish. Let's see the boat, the area, the FAO fishing area, where that, where that operation took place. So it's becoming more important, this issue about know your product. Uh, in the future and in the present, we, we do have some challenges. I have shown before that aquaculture is growing a lot. But in many developing countries, aquaculture still faces the problem of capital availability, of governance. Uh, in general, of course, not for developed countries, but in, in many developing countries, traceability is still a very, uh, very difficult aspect to implement in supply of fish products. Uh, fisheries management, we see that in many areas of the world, overfished, is it still a reality? So in this regard, it is still a, a very challenging aspect. Uh, the State Secretary mentioned the issue of fraud. Fish fraud is becoming one of the major problems of the international trade. We all know about IEU fishing in many countries. We all know about uh, many species being labeled with higher value species. So it's something that, that affects all of us in terms of the the sustainability of the, mar of the, of the trade, uh, the, the, the aspect of associating a bad product with, the, the, the species of the, with that species in terms of accessing your markets. So that, there is a lot of challenges to be overcome. But in addition to, but in the opposite side, opposite side we do have some positive aspects. Population are becoming, in, in general, countries are becoming richer, even, even developing countries. The demand for fish and fish products is showing as a, a steady growth in developing countries. We have better income distribution that's generating that. Uh, we have population flows to big cities, less time available for, for cooking at home. And that's, that's also in terms of for, for ready fish products is becoming more easily and also the demand for that is higher at the moment. Uh, and of course, new technologies can, can, can bring that to the reality. But since fish is also an important commodity in international uh, terms, the problem of trade barriers and trade distortions is a big reality. It's very easy 
to create problems uh, for fish products at the border, to create problems in terms of, oh, it's a missing a certificate. So it's, it's and we, are, well, we all know that we deal with perishable goods. So the problem of a fish stopped at the border is a, is a huge problem for us. Uh, in fishers in the UN is a very interesting aspect in the United Nations. In FAO, in 1979, we have created the Code of Conduct for Responsible Fisheries, 1979. At that time, we are already talking about traceability, about trade barriers, about uh, uh, sanitary and, non -san and sanitary aspects. So it was a very innovative code. By the way, this year in July, we are going to celebrate the 25th anniversary of this code. Uh, this code is available at our website. It's a, it's a very interesting uh, reading because it's a set of principles, a set of principles to governments, but also to the private sector. There is no distinction. It's a set of principles of how to make fish more sustainable in terms of trade, in terms of supply, in terms of uh, logist, uh, all, all, the, all the value chain. And in addition, of course, in the UN system, we do have the sustainable development goals. Uh, one, thing about in, about one thing important about the sustainable development goals, it's, it's not a set of goals that is targeted for governments or for industry or for the population in general. It's a societal value. It's something that's very important to all of us. We started to see a lot of companies that are marketing their products using the SDGs. For example, oh, by selling these fish products, I, I help to achieve uh, gender inclusion. I help, I help to achieve uh, the sustainability of life below water. So it's, we are starting to see a lot of companies marketing their products using the SDGs. And what's the future? Uh, this morning, uh, also, Gus mentioned about the population growth and uh, the old uh, text that you have read. Uh, we, we, we have a population growth forecast in the last years very deep, very steep. And we also know how the conversion rate of fish is good if, com if compared to other animal proteins. Uh, so fish can be a good answer to feed this population growth without the problem that Goose mentioned about one increasing and the other decreasing. And in terms of what, this is the, the QR code to download the fish part of this publication. That's the FAO forecasts for 2018 until 2028. And uh, we are, in aquaculture is going to be, to continue to be quite important. As I mentioned, it's going to suppress capture fisheries into 2022. Asia is going to be, con con to continue to be uh, particularly important. Uh, and in, a, in, a, in terms of trade, one is important aspect is that we are starting to have more diversified importing countries. So more countries are starting, we, we will start to import fish and fish products. Uh, and to finalize, I'm just would like to, to uh, nowadays it's very easy to get information on fisheries. So we, we go there, we go here, and it's on the web, and it's, it's, it's easier. But I just would like to know that FAO has a free project that any user can access with information on fish and fish products. We provide analysis, policy, and training. We participate in events and conferences like today. We have three major publications. Uh, the Globe Fish Highlights, the Chinese Price Report is the first publication in the world that, that disseminates price of major Chinese fishes and the European Price Report. Uh, I'm just, we're just going to mention some examples of the kind of information that you, that you can find. I mentioned about the rejections of the border of the four major importers, Canada, US, Japan, and the EU, 
at the, at the GoFish website, the address is here, we do have an analysis of the rejections at the border by cause. So you just can click here and see what are the major areas of my microbiological, for example, that causes the rejection at the border. Uh, we also have a matrix of trade for some major species, like for example, in this case of shrimp, you have all the countries, importers and exporters as a percentage of the world trade. And finally, we are going to implement in a couple of weeks a country profile. So if you are an origin exporter to uh, Japan, to we have seen this, this morning, uh, yesterday, sorry, uh, to South Korea, you are going to have like a snapshot of the country in terms of the economic data, production data, exports and imports. So all of this information is for free. You just have to access this site here and you get all this information from FAO. Uh, my final word, I think it's, it's in terms of sustainability. I would say that sustainability is key for us. It's key in terms of economic terms, it's key for the environment, but it's, it's key also for the employees at a, at a social level. So thank you very much again for the opportunity, and thank you, Gus. Thank you.